This is Block 10, the 1960s, Part 6, Changing Roles for Women, with the section of the Equal Rights Amendment, or the ERA. A major feminist issue in the 1960s and 1970s was an attempt to pass a constitutional amendment guaranteeing equal rights based on gender. Uh, it was a simply worded amendment. It said that, you know, uh, the laws of the United States uh, shall not be construed to treat anybody differently due to their gender. Um, it was it was thought that this law would pass incredibly easily. Uh, Presidents Johnson, Nixon, Ford, and Carter were all behind it. Republicans were behind it. Democrats were behind it. Uh, the amendment passed both houses of Congress with far beyond the required two-thirds majority. Uh, it went to the states for approval. Uh, if you know what the amendment process is, three-quarters of the state legislatures have to approve an amendment. Um, and the Equal Rights Amendment was, it seemed that it was well on its way towards easy ratification, and it would have been the 27th Amendment to the Constitution. However, around 1976, in stepped uh, this woman down here at the bottom right. Her name was Phyllis Schlafly, uh, Schlafly Phyllis Schlafly. And uh, Phyllis Schlafly kind of started a one-woman organization. Um, it was a one-woman crusade against the ERA. Uh, and Ms. Sch Schleifly argued that the ERA, you know, hey, it sounds good in a soundbite, and off the bat it seems like a pretty good idea, but it's going to have really negative consequences, she argued. Um, it's going to mean that women are going to be required to sign up uh, for the draft for selective service, that if you can't discriminate uh, men and women, then women have to sign up for the draft just as much as men. Uh, she said that the ERA would prevent women from collecting alimony from divorced husbands, uh, that women would not get fur you know that men and women uh in t in divorce proceedings uh children would not be usually placed with the mother that it would be like a total free for all up in the air uh she said that you know uh that you could no longer require men and women's bathrooms uh if the ERA passed uh and she kind of fought this lonely crusade uh and it started to gain more and more momentum that, wait a minute, maybe these things are true, you know, do the women of America want to be signing up for uh, a draft? Do the women of America want to sign up not to be supported uh, by husbands after they are divorced? Because why should the husband support a wife? Why shouldn't the wife support the divorced ex-husband? Uh, that if we're going to have this equal rights amendment, then, you know, you can't make that argument necessarily. In the 1970s, you know, Phyllis Schlafly caught an increasingly conservative mood that, you know, after, you know, many years of progressivism, you know, Johnson and then, you know, uh, the American people were growing more conservative in the late 1970s. Uh, and four states short of ratification, uh, the ERA stalled. Um, time ran out, uh, ERA supporters, and there were millions of them, uh, ERA supporters, you know, got an extension, uh, but several states started rescinding uh, their ratification of ERA, uh, the time ran out again, and the amendment died. Um, whether, you know, you supported, you know, the ERA, the Equal Rights Amendment, or not, you have to uh, give credit to Ms. Schleifly, uh for kind of proving again that one person can make a difference, uh, whether it's a difference you like or a difference you don't like. Uh, Ms. Schleifly kind of personally led the charge to stop what she saw uh, as a disaster for American women, uh, and she earned the enmity and the hatred of feminists uh, across the United States and across the world uh, for leading her charge against uh, the ERA.